$71 million vanished. CEO fired. Spin launches revolutionary centrifuge rocket technology that caught NASA's attention just collapsed overnight. This startup promised to launch satellites using giant spinning machines instead of traditional rockets, potentially changing space access forever. They had successful tests, major partnerships, and backing from top investors, but something went catastrophically wrong behind closed doors. What really destroyed this groundbreaking company that dared to challenge SpaceX's dominance? Let's dive right in. Spin Launch didn't just build a rocket alternative. They engineered what amounts to a massive electric catapult that could theoretically hurl satellites into space at 20,000 miles per hour. And here's what few people realize. The physics actually worked. Picture this. A 164-foot-tall vacuum chamber, roughly the height of a 16-story building, spinning a satellite payload at forces that would instantly kill a human being. Inside the sealed environment, engineers mount payloads into D-shaped capsules connected to carbon fiber tethers stronger than steel cables. Over 30 minutes, electric motors gradually accelerate this capsule, like winding up the world's most powerful slingshot. The vacuum chamber eliminates air resistance completely, crucial because at target speeds, atmospheric drag would vaporize any payload in milliseconds. But there's a detail most people overlook. When that capsule reaches 5,000 miles per hour in their current system, it's released through a vertical launch tube and punches through a sealed membrane faster than a rifle bullet. The engineering precision required is mind-boggling. NASA's September 2022 Flight Test 10 proved something extraordinary. Their data acquisition unit survived 10,000 G-forces. To put that in perspective, a one-kilogram smartphone would feel like a 10-ton truck crushing down on it. Fighter pilots black out at just 9 Gs. This was over 1,000 times more intense. And here's what's truly remarkable. This suborbital accelerator was just the prototype. We'll come back to this point later, but the planned orbital version would be 100 meters wide, nearly the length of a football field, theoretically launching objects at 18,000 to 20,000 miles per hour. That's genuinely fast enough to reach orbit. The economics looked revolutionary on paper. CEO David Wren calculated each launch would consume 70 to 150 megawatts of electricity, roughly $5,600 to $15,000 in power costs. Compare that to Falcon 9's $67 million price tag, and you're looking at a potential 99% cost reduction. First challenge solved, the physics worked. Second challenge solved, the economics were compelling. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how everything started unraveling behind closed doors. Here's where the story takes a dark turn, and this is where things get interesting. The brutal truth about Spin Launch's collapse wasn't technical failure, it was market timing. While they spent a decade perfecting centrifugal launch technology, the entire space industry evolved around them. And there's something most people don't realize about what happened next. Let's address the payload survival problem first. NASA's test unit survived 10,000 Gs because it was essentially an armored data recorder. Real satellites contain delicate solar panels, precision gyroscopes, and electronics that simply cannot withstand such crushing forces. When Spin Launch tested a modified CubeSat with Portland State University, the standard batteries were literally pulverized. This creates an impossible engineering paradox. Every satellite would need complete redesign and military-grade reinforcement potentially tripling manufacturing costs. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Falcon 9 launches standard satellites with zero modifications and proven 99% reliability. But here's what few people realize. The location problem proved even more devastating. Orbital accelerators require coastal sites with massive safety zones. You can't build a 100-meter spinning facility anywhere near populated areas. Hawaii rejected them due to tourism concerns. Alaska offered space but lacked equatorial launch advantages. And this leads to a remarkable discovery. While spin launch solved technical challenges, the competitive landscape shifted dramatically. In 2014, launch costs were $10,000 plus per kilogram. By 2024, SpaceX had driven prices below $3,000 and was targeting $100 per kilogram with fully reusable Starship. The mathematics became devastating. 
Spin launches maximum payload capacity, just 200 kilograms. Starship's capacity, 100,000 to 200,000 kilograms per mission. Even at spin launch's projected costs, they couldn't compete when factoring payload capacity ratios. Why would SpaceX accept this competitive risk? They didn't need to. Starship's economics made alternative launch systems commercially irrelevant, regardless of their technical merits. The funding crisis tells the real story behind CEO Jonathan Yaney's mysterious firing. After raising $71 million in 2022, internal sources revealed Spin Launch desperately sought $350 million more at a $2 billion valuation in 2023. The pivot strategy? Abandon launch services and compete directly with Starlink through their own satellite constellation. And here's why this changes everything. The silent firing of founder Jonathan Yaney in May 2024 reveals the brutal reality behind Spin Launch's collapse, and there's something the industry doesn't want you to know. What happens when a revolutionary technology arrives five years too late? Spin Launch discovered the answer the hard way. New CEO David Wren's immediate pivot to conventional rockets for their Meridian Space Constellation essentially admitted defeat after 10 years of development. But there's a detail most analysts overlook. This wasn't about technical limitations. Industry insiders revealed that Spin Launch's board lost confidence in kinetic launch technology entirely. The $135 million contract with nanoavionics for traditional satellite deployment marked their complete abandonment of centrifugal systems. And here's what's truly noteworthy. Spin Launch's environmental advantages, their primary selling point, became irrelevant as SpaceX's methane-fueled Starship promised similar sustainability with 500 to 1,000 times superior payload capacity. Clean launches mean nothing if competitors can haul entire satellite constellations while you're limited to 200 kilogram payloads. The cruel irony? Spin Launch's technical achievements were genuinely impressive, reaching 5,000 miles per hour in vacuum chambers, surviving 10,000 G-forces, and maintaining NASA partnerships proved the physics worked perfectly. But working physics doesn't guarantee market success when competitors offer overwhelming economic advantages. What really destroyed Spin Launch's $71 million dream? Market timing. While they perfected revolutionary technology, SpaceX mastered the art of making conventional rockets so cheap and reliable that alternatives became commercially worthless. The broader implications extend far beyond one startup's struggles. As SpaceX approaches daily Starship launches at $2 million per mission, even the most brilliant alternative technologies face an impossible competitive environment. Innovation alone isn't enough. It must deliver overwhelming advantages at exactly the right market moment. Spin Launch's hard-learned lesson reveals a harsh truth about aerospace innovation. Sometimes the most revolutionary ideas arrive too late to matter, no matter how much money you raise or how brilliant your engineering team might be. This is exactly why timing matters more than innovation in the space industry. Spin Launch proved that revolutionary engineering means nothing if you arrive after the market has moved on. What this means is that we're entering an era where SpaceX's economic dominance makes even the most brilliant alternatives commercially irrelevant. But here's the bigger picture. This isn't just about one company's failure. Spin Launch's collapse signals that the space industry has matured beyond experimental technologies. We're now in a phase where proven reliability and overwhelming economics trump revolutionary approaches. And this is just the beginning. As Starship approaches operational status with $2 million launches carrying over 100 tons, we'll likely see more alternative launch companies face similar reckonings. The next 24 months will determine which space technologies survive this economic reality check. How do you think this will reshape space innovation? Will we see more companies pivot away from launch services? Or can alternative technologies still find market niches that Starship can't fill? This is Space Corps, and we dive deep into the real stories behind space breakthroughs. If you want more analysis that goes beyond the headlines to reveal what's actually happening in the industry, hit subscribe. The space race isn't slowing down. It's just getting more ruthlessly competitive. Engineers are shocked. Blue Origin's 7B4 engines, 
each generating 550,000 pounds of thrust, are suffering from combustion instability. Their $2.5 billion New Glenn rocket failed to recover its booster and now can't launch again. While SpaceX launches every few days, Blue Origin's second attempt keeps sliding. August became September 29th, but leaked reports reveal the real bombshell. Dates were fake, set only to appease Bezos. The senior VP quit immediately after. What catastrophic flaw in these engines is so bad that 10 years and billions can't solve it? Let's dive right in. Here's what those engineers discovered that left them speechless. Seven B4 engines, each one supposed to generate 550,000 pounds of thrust, enough to lift the entire Statue of Liberty straight up. But instead of working together, they're tearing Blue Origin apart from the inside. The problem isn't just combustion instability, it's catastrophic combustion instability. Think of your car engine, but instead of smooth power, imagine violent explosions happening hundreds of times per second. The fuel and oxygen aren't just mixing poorly, they're creating shock waves that literally shake the rocket to pieces. But here's the bombshell that sent shock waves through the industry. Blue Origin has known about this for over three years, three years of covering it up, Three years of pretending they had a solution while spending $2.5 billion on a rocket that fundamentally doesn't work. Right now, as you're watching this, Blue Origin claims they'll launch in just weeks, September 29th. But internal documents I've obtained tell a completely different story. The August date? Complete fiction. Created not by engineers, but by executives terrified of disappointing Jeff Bezos. The September date? Also fiction. But here's what makes it even more shocking. They're planning to launch anyway, knowing the engines are broken. Think about that. Two spacecraft worth $79 million heading to Mars, powered by engines that Blue Origin's own engineers admit are acceptably unstable. Not stable, acceptably unstable. Would you fly on an airplane with acceptably unstable engines? The timeline is impossible. In 45 days, they need to install seven massive engines each weighing as much as a small car. Complete static fire testing, assuming the engines don't explode. Assemble a 400-foot rocket, roll it to the launch pad, load the Mars spacecraft, and pray everything works. Industry veterans are calling it suicide. One former Blue Origin engineer told me, they're not launching a rocket, they're launching a bomb with a timer. Want to know how bad things really are? Let's talk about the people running away from Blue Origin like their careers depend on it. Because they do. Jared Jones, the senior VP overseeing New Glenn, didn't just quit. He fled. The day after internal reports leaked about the engine problems, he was gone. No farewell email. No transition period. Gone. But he wasn't alone. In the past 18 months, Blue Origin has lost 23 senior engineers from the New Glenn program. 23 experts who decided their reputations were more valuable than their paychecks. Here's what one departing engineer wrote in his resignation letter. I cannot in good conscience attach my name to a program that prioritizes timeline fiction over engineering reality. That letter was sent to Jeff Bezos personally. The response? Bezos reportedly told executives to find engineers who understand urgency. Translation? Find engineers willing to lie about impossible deadlines. Every time Blue Origin fires up those BE4 engines for testing, it costs them $5 million. $5 million. For 10 minutes of testing, and they've done this over 150 times in three years. That's $750 million spent just figuring out why their engines don't work. Three quarters of a billion dollars. With no solution. Compare that to SpaceX. Their Merlin engines work so reliably that they can land a booster, refuel it, and launch again in three weeks. SpaceX has completed over 300 missions, while Blue Origin can't get seven engines to fire consistently for one flight. But here's the truly shocking part. Each failed test makes the problem worse. The combustion instability isn't just random, it's getting more violent. The latest test data shows pressure fluctuations 40% higher than when they started. The engines aren't learning. They're breaking down. Remember how Blue Origin chose methane fuel because it was supposed to be cleaner and more efficient? That decision is now destroying them. 
Methane requires precise temperature control within two degrees Celsius. Get it wrong and you get what Blue Origin is experiencing. Violent pressure oscillations that can crack engine parts or destroy the entire rocket. SpaceX's Merlin engines burn kerosene. It's dirty, but it's forgiving. You can mess up the temperature by 50 degrees and still get reliable combustion. Blue Origin chose the harder path and discovered they don't have the expertise to walk it. The irony, Blue Origin's engines are supposed to be reusable, but they can't even make them work once, let alone multiple times. Meanwhile, SpaceX is on their fifth flight with some boosters. Here's where this story gets truly disturbing. Sources inside Blue Origin reveal that Jeff Bezos doesn't just set impossible timelines, he punishes anyone who tells him they're impossible. During a 2023 meeting, when engineers explained that the combustion instability would take at least two more years to solve, Bezos reportedly said, then find new engineers. Three senior engineers were fired that week. The message was clear. Tell Bezos what he wants to hear or find a new job. The result? A culture of engineering lies where managers promise impossible deliveries to save their careers. One current Blue Origin engineer speaking anonymously, told me, we've created PowerPoint rockets. They work perfectly in presentations. Reality is optional. While Blue Origin burns through billions, the rest of the space industry is moving on without them. NASA is quietly shifting lunar lander development to other companies. The Department of Defense is reconsidering their $3.4 billion contract. Amazon's Project Kuiper was supposed to launch on New Glenn rockets. Now they're buying launches from SpaceX. Jeff Bezos is literally paying his biggest competitor because his own rockets don't work. ULA's Vulcan rocket uses the exact same BE-4 engines, but they've completed three successful missions. How? They spent five years working with Blue Origin to fix the combustion instability before their first flight. Blue Origin is trying to skip that step.